Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If fruit doesn't equal root, <laughs> then we become top heavy and we blow over in the first storm. If you think about a gigantic fruit tree out in an orchard, heavily laden with fruit, huge branches, although you can't see them, there are roots, they say, that go down, however wide those branches are, there are roots that go down that deep into the ground. So it's got to be deep and wide, not wide and no deep. Because when that's the case, then we're just all carnal, we're all stuff, we're all just things, and we can't handle the difficulties in life, we can't handle the storms of life, we can't handle people who come against us because we're accustomed to getting everything we want the way we want it, when we want it, and when we don't, we act like Opie did on that little <laughs> video during our conference news where he wasn't getting to do what he wanted and he just laid down on the floor and had an absolute screaming fit. Do any of you as Christians ever have fits? One lady? I think not. I think there's a few more. <laughs> Amen. I think so. You know, my husband, calm, wonderful Dave, he had a little minor fit the other day. <laughs> he asked me to take the clippers and shave the back of his neck. And I do that all the time, so I did. And then I, I saw this these couple of wild hairs. And I went in pursuit of those hairs. <laughs> now I'm going to tell the result of pursuing the wrong thing right here. <laughs> so the first time I was real careful, but and I got one of them, but I didn't get the other one. I thought, oh, I must need to get closer. <laughs> so see, you already know what happened. Yeah. I took a chunk out of Dave's hair about that, <laughs> that wide. Well, he got upset. I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it was a little funny, but I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and then he said, if I did that to you, you would have a fit. <laughs> and so see, that's big for Dave, because he's, no, he's normally pretty calm. I had to apologize five times just to get him to <laughs> say it was okay. So I'm, you know, Just so you know, Dave, duh, you can rattle him if you, if you press long enough. <laughs> But seriously, what, what are you going to want? What am I going to want when it's time for me to go? Now, think with me seriously about this. When it's time for me to go, what am I, I going to want? I'm going to want to know that I'm right with God. Come on now. More than anything, I'm going to want to have peace with God. I want to know that I'm right. I don't want to have any fear of facing God. <laughs> When it comes to that point, I, I want to be ready to go and not have any fear. And I'm going to want people around me that I know love me. That's the only things that are really going to matter. So if we spend too much time in this life, and of course we have to spend some time on succeeding and we need to spend some time on making money and we you know we do need to spend some time on those things it's not wrong to want a nice house it's not wrong to want a nice car it's not wrong to want to provide for your kids but there's a difference in having a desire for those things and pursuing them the word seek s-e-e-k is an extremely strong word and interestingly enough I looked up the word seek, and every place that it's used in the Old Testament, it refers to seeking God. Every single place it's used in the Old Testament, it refers to either seeking God or sometimes God was seeking people for something. The word means to crave, to pursue, to make sacrifices, to get, to go after with all of your strength and all of your heart. So, you know, we can tell a lot about ourselves 
And yes, I'm going to ask you to go home and do a little homework and just have a little meeting with yourself. Just, just a little short, tiny meeting with yourself. Little inventory, little soul searching. This is good for all of us. And just ask yourself, what am I pursuing? What am I seeking? What is the most important thing to you? What do you, what do you spend most of your time on? What do you talk about the most? What are you putting most of your energies into? And you know, I think that we would find that probably a good portion of it is just wrong. It's just not, it's not what God tells us to seek. There's only actually a handful of things that I can find in the Bible that it says to seek. We're to seek righteousness. We're to seek God. We're to seek the kingdom. And I think there's four or five other things. Seek to walk in love. But there's really not a big long list. And nowhere ever, ever are we told to seek things. And you might say, well, the most important thing to me is that my child gets saved. Well, you know that, yes, praise God, we want that. But even that we're not told to seek. <laughs> Desire that. But that's not what we seek. You're a little quiet. So. <laughs> I'm telling you, I wanted more than anything for this ministry to grow. Well, you know, when you want something that bad, there's some wrong motives involved. And I think anybody who starts out, and I think a lot of people who start out in, in ministry even, they're, they're brokenhearted, insecure people. Not everybody, but it's amazing how God uses messes. He uses people that are messed up, and your mess can become your message if you'll, if you'll let it. But we, we start out and... You know, I, was, I had insecurities, so I was getting a, a lot of my worth and value out of what I was doing. Well, when you're getting your worth and value out of what you're doing, you don't want to do a little of anything. You want to do a lot of everything because the bigger something is, the better you feel about yourself. And like it or not, in our society, the bigger something is, the more people admire you. I wish it wasn't that way, but it is. The first thing everybody wants to know is how many people were there? <laughs> how big is your church? How many people does it seat? And you know, of course, everybody, you know, there's different articles that come out. Well, you know, this is one of the five fastest growing churches in the world. Now, this one's one of the 10 fastest growing churches in the world. I bet you God's got things hidden that are so big it would just blow our minds. And they're just like, we don't even know about it. Amen. And yes, we want to grow. It's not, I, I don't want you to misunderstand me tonight. I'm not saying that it's wrong to to have a desire for those things. But the Bible teaches us if we will delight ourselves in the Lord, Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. Yes. Delight yourself in the Lord. Let him be first in your life. Our Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness... And all of these other things will be given you besides. That's a much better way to do it. Seek the Lord and let God give you the stuff. Amen? Say, seek the Lord and let God give me the stuff. Now, I believe, even though you're sitting there looking extremely innocent, I believe that you need this message tonight. But you know, there's a part of us that's afraid if we give up going after what we want. There's a part of us that's a little bit afraid we won't get it. <laughs> little, little tiny, oh, I see you guys up there, little tiny. But you're going to see that all the Bible really tells us to do is ask then leave it alone and tend to God's business. <laughs> we don't have to camp on top of it. We don't have to harp on it. We don't have to repeat the same phrase 25 times every day. We just need to ask God, tell him what we want. Ask and keep on asking. The Bible says knock and keep on knocking. Seek and keep on seeking. Not wrong to want something at all. It's never wrong to want something. You can ask God for anything you want. 
But that's not what we should seek and pursue. What I want and what I seek are two different things. Do you understand? What I, now, I've worked hard at this ministry, but now I know that my worth and identity is not tied up in it. Yes, it would be hard for me if, if something happened and I lost it. Naturally, it would be hard, but I know that I would survive because even if I wasn't Joyce Meyer, I would still be Joyce Meyer. Amen? <laughs> and we have to understand those things. Otherwise, what we're doing always becomes, it becomes fearful to us that we might lose it. And my goodness, if we lose our position, and if we lose our status, and if we lose our favorite friends, and if we lose our, you know, position in the community, and if, we, if we're no longer in leadership at the church, and whatever it is, you know, that we feel gives us status, we just think we're not going to be worth anything if we lose that. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. God loves you so much that if those things mean too much to you, he will be happy to rip them out of your life <laughs> and strip you bare. And it will seem like a very violent thing, and you will not know what in the world God is doing, but when it's all over, you'll be free, 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 free. <laughs> Come on, give God a praise. You know, I wanted to walk in here and say, this weekend we're going to do a deeper life conference. That's about the reaction I thought I'd get. <laughs> so that's exactly why I didn't do it. <laughs> but you know, that's almost concerning to me because I don't even know today if a lot of people even know what that means. You know, years ago, Pastor Tommy, do you remember this? They used to have deeper life conferences. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were whole kind, people would just go all over the place to go to these deeper life conferences, and they'd sit there the whole weekend and listen to preaching all day long, day after day after day, about just what I'm trying to talk to you about tonight, yeah. the deeper life, about not being shallow. And let me tell you something, we need to want more of that. If we don't want more of that, then we need to want more of that. We need that. So, you know... I've been a Christian for a pretty long time, and I've had a decent-sized ministry, not the size it was now, but decent. No real money problems. All my kids were saved, husband saved, got along good in my marriage, and I wasn't really happy. I was still discontent, something that just wasn't right on the inside. Do you ever wonder what is wrong with you and what it's going to take to make you happy? <laughs> Come on, does anybody ever, I mean... <laughs> Did you ever think, well, you know, if I just can get this, then I'll be happy, and now you've got that, you ain't any better off than you were before. I mean, be honest. Don't you ever wonder sometimes, what is it really going to take to get me to the point where I can just get up and be happy and go through the day and be content and go to bed at night and be happy and not always be looking for some new fix to give me a new thrill? Amen? Some of you are looking like a calf at a new gate out there, like... Where are we going with this? <laughs> well, you know, when I started crying, you know how we do, God, what is wrong in my life? I don't know what's wrong in my life. And, you know, truthfully, we don't really want to know what's wrong in our life. but Because <laughs> if God tells us, we're going to feel worse than we did before we ask. But, so, I, you know, what's wrong in my life? And I mean, the thing I heard in my heart was, you're shallow. Well, what's that? <laughs> so it wasn't too long after that, and I found myself in Luke chapter 5. So let's go there. Shallow Christians wanting fruit, but not caring about the roots. <laughs> Amen. They want to be used, but they don't want to be prepared. Mm. Yeah, some of those are worth writing down, folks. <laughs> Verse 1, Now it occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret at the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two boats drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gone down from them, and they were washing their nets. And getting into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon Peter, 
He requested him to draw away a little bit from the shore, and then he sat down and continued to teach the people from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water. You know, deep is the opposite of shallow. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a haul. Now, a haul, what is a haul? That's like back the dump truck up, make it a big one, and unload it in my driveway. I'll be happy to haul it all in. Well, you know, when God's trying to deal with you about something, you don't need a lot of explanation. And so remembering that God had told me that I was shallow, and here I am going after all this stuff that I want, and none of it's really happening, and, you know, I got some things, but I'm still not happy. And, and so then God tells me I'm shallow, so now I'm reading this. Come on out into the deep and get ready for a haul. Simon Peter answered, now you have to understand this next verse or you miss the whole point of this. Simon Peter answered, Master, we toiled all night. We are exhausted. We caught nothing in our nets. Now just stop right there and don't keep reading. <laughs> you got to understand this. When Jesus showed up, these guys have been fishing all night. And they didn't have all the electric stuff we do. I mean, when they fished, they worked. And they, didn't, they caught nothing, 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 nothing. I wonder how many people we've got listening to me right now that you feel like you have fished all night and caught nothing. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Come on now. Oh, God, I'm doing everything that I thought you told me to do and nothing's working and I just don't understand. God, what do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, I know, I need to rebuke more devils. I need to pray more. <laughs> They were tired. They had pulled the boats in. They had drug these big nets out of the boat. They had them up on the shore. They were cleaning the nets up because they knew they had to get some sleep and then go back out again. I guess they were looking forward to going by Starbucks and getting a muffin and a cappuccino. And <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> and going on home, hugging the wife and the kids and crawling up under the feather blanket and I don't know, they probably slept on a rock or some gravel or something, I don't know. But I'm sure they were looking forward to going home. They were tired and probably hungry. And Jesus said, um, go back out. Come on now. Would you have done it? Go back out, only go way out. Go deeper and lower your nets and you'll catch more fish than you know what to do with. Now, Peter said, Lord, we are exhausted. One, we don't feel like going. Come on. We caught nothing. Going back out there is not going to work. We're exhausted. This is not going to work. We're tired. So in essence, what they were saying is, we don't want to. We don't feel like it, and we don't think it's going to work anyway. Now let's put the scripture back up again. <laughs> but on the ground of your word, I will, <laughs> I will, I will, I will, thank God for willpower. For Holy Ghost willpower. We don't have to feel like it. We don't have to want to. We don't have to think it's a good idea. If God says do it, we do it. And we believe when we do what God says to do, then we get what we believe God wants us to have. Now, let me tell you something. God is merciful. And many times he does things for us that we do not deserve. But look at me and let me tell you something. Any person who thinks that they are going to get the true blessings of God and live in disobedience is just fooling yourself. <laughs> it's just, I don't care what the new modern age teaching is. <laughs> the Bible is the Bible. Amen. And the Word is the Word. 
And I'm sure God's as modern as, as any of us. After all, you know, he gave the technology for the texting and the Facebook and the, all the stuff that we think we can't live without now. So, I found out something last week that I'm still trying to figure out. Now, you know, I kind of don't live in that world, so I was, with, I was with a bunch of people. A lot of them were younger, and they were, they were telling me about these selfies that everybody's doing now. <laughs> you know what that is, Pastor? You do? I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I, I'm like, what's a selfie? <laughs> See, I got some other people going, uh, but they got gray hair like I would have if I didn't color it. So. <laughs> I think it's just kind of like our age group. And so I'm going, what is a selfie? And they said, oh, people just take pictures themselves. <laughs> like... <laughs> and sometimes, like, all day, like <laughs> when they're eating, just doing all kinds of stuff. And they put them on Facebook. There are 450 million uploads every day of selfies. <laughs> I said, I have spent 38 years trying to die to self. I, I'm missing something here. Now, please don't everybody who does selfies all day get mad at me. I'm just, <laughs> I know it's a modern thing and you're having fun with it. And so please don't write me and tell me I'm out of touch with reality. That's, you know, <laughs> but I am trying to make a point. You know, I mean, if there's 450 million People taking pictures of themselves all day long and putting them on the internet. Maybe there's a little something else. I mean, at least they're going to do it. Maybe do one a day. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and preferably not when you're on. <laughs> Look at me, I'm eating. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now, come on, don't get mad at me. Like I said, I can just, I can just claim old age on this one. I'll just... I just realized I'm out of touch with some of the new stuff going on, but I thought, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, God is just as modern as anybody, <laughs> but the Bible still says don't live by what you want, what you think, or what you feel. Learn to do what I tell you to do. Live deeper. Don't be so shallow, and you will not have to chase blessings because they will chase you. Amen? Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Master, we're exalted. We exalted. Exhausted. <laughs> Years ago, I was trying to pray, and I was really tired, and I was trying to tell God that I was exhausted, and he was exalted, and I said, you're exhausted, and I'm exalted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, on the ground of your word, we will lower the net again. Verse 6, and when they had done this, are you ready? And when they had done this, and when they had done what God told them to do. And when they had done what God told them to do. <laughs> Even though they didn't want to, didn't feel like it, didn't think it was going to work. When they had done what God told them to do, they caught a great number of fish and so many that their nets were at the point of breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and take hold with them. And they came and filled all the boats so much that they began to sink. Now somebody can give God praise. You know, when we pursue a stronger and a more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, we can rest in the fact that God will provide what's good for us at the right time in our lives. Let's always put Jesus first and everything else will be added.
today we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite long, but they never go to medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, you are, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. And so I'm inviting you to join us in partnership. Help us glorify God and share Christ. Help us help hurting people. Help us feed the poor and get the gospel to people that don't yet know what we know. You can check us out on JoyceMeyer.org and find out all that you need to know about partnership or you can call the ministry. God bless you and thank you for praying about this. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. De dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.